But <laughs> wham! <laughs> Like, get it going, and then... And, oh, yeah, like, swing it. Vroom, yeah. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Hey, Maniacs. Hey. Maniacs. Hey, guess what? It's Midsummer Maniacs. It's Midsummer Maniacs, the recap podcast dedicated to the ITV series Midsummer Murders. Each week we dig into the episodes of the show, including the murders, the mayhem, the loonies. Oh boy, there are crazy loonies in this episode and everything else we love. I'm Mark Bell. I'm Sarah Smith Robbins. And, and hey, guess what? We're a spoiler podcast too. Yes. We're going to talk about who the killer is. So if you haven't watched season 18, episode four, A Dying Art, pause, go watch it, come back, or it will be ruined for you. And if your kids can handle giant skull sculptures, they can handle this podcast. If they can handle really bad art oh they can handle this episode yep because <laughs> there's some doozies uh just a couple of newsy things right off the beginning uh we did not get blown away last night the major news story is that the midwest got lots of tornadoes last night and we were not affected by them but boy it's windy out there still well and kentucky which is just south of us it did get some really serious weather and had quite a few fatalities. So if you're in Kentucky, our thoughts are with you. Yep. And we hope you're okay. Yeah, I hope all our listeners are okay. Yep. Speaking of okay, uh, wow. we uh, made a mistake last we week. We did make a mistake last week. I don't know week. what that has to do with okay. I was just reaching for a transition there. No. <laughs> While, we I were editing, okay. mm -hmm. While I was editing, I realized that we did a grievous error last week. Mm. We mistakenly said that Lucas Malfoy was from... Okay, his name is not Lucas Malfoy. You're screwing it up again. What, what is his name? <laughs> Malfoy. That's his name. I think we said that Snape was in Raven's Claw. Yeah, I think we said Snape too. Which clearly we had Slytherin on the brain, but yeah. said Raven's Claw. We yeah. got the two confused. So all you Harry Potter fans out there. Thank you for not uh, jumping on us like hyenas yeah. as we deserved for getting that yes. wrong. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you what the uh, the socials are abuzz with this week. Oh, yeah? So they What's are up? looking forward to the Midsummer Maniacs live holiday super spectacular Extravaganza. Special. Extravaganza. Next Saturday... The 18th of December mm. at 2 p.m. We go 2 live. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go live on the YouTubes. And you are more than welcome to join us for our live holiday special spectacular. We hope you will. It'll yeah. be fun. Yeah, we're going to have fun. Get yourself a good drink and sit down. and We're going to cover all sorts of things, including Saints and Sinners, episode 18, number 5. Uh, but we're also going to uh, release the world premiere. The world <laughs> premiere. If we get it done this week. People around the globe are sitting on the edge of their seats, counting down the moments until they can hear. Midsummer parody holiday song. Yes. Our third annual Midsummer parody so holiday song. So the first song we did, we just put out the lyrics. It yeah. was 12 Days of Midsummer. Yeah, we didn't even try to sing it. People went bizarre nuts. <laughs> they went nutsy bobo. It was fun. Yep. And then last, last year, year, we did Midsummer Bells. Yes. It was Carol the Bells with Midsummer lyrics. The entire planet went nuts. <laughs> and nobody said, Sarah should never sing anymore. Please no. stop her. Oh, my gosh. Which they should have, but they didn't. So you, thanks for that. You have a, such a better voice than mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice backhander there. Well, I'm I'm just saying, <laughs> just because my voice is better than yours doesn't mean that mine's good. And this year we'll have the new holiday song released on the 18th world premiere. It's a duet. Yep, it is a duet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, I'm embarrassed already. Yeah, <laughs> and nobody else has heard it. Anyhow, and. It's worse because I'm going to play the video and then we're going to talk to people afterward. Oh, no. Can yeah. I turn my camera oh. off? Because I can't look anybody in the eye after they've heard me sing. 
That's horrible. No, we're going to come back on camera. My gosh, I can't. We do this, and I, I can't believe that when I was in high school, which is, granted, quite a while ago, but when I was in high school, I was in show choir, and I regularly stood in front of hundreds of people and sang songs, a cappella, solos, no problem. And now if somebody catches me humming, I'm like, you didn't hear that. That wasn't me. Our fans will love it. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I have high hopes for this one. It's pretty good. All right. So I think so too. Uh, this episode is season 18, number four, A Dying Art. Mm. Broadcast on the 3rd of February, 2016. 5.54 million views. Directed by Matt Carter and written by John P- Jeff Povey. I you get, know what? I get nervous now when I hear the broadcast dates because they're creeping up on us. 2016, it's only and, five years ago. And my first thought is, that's three years before the pandemic <laughs> began. Yeah, yeah. That was in uh, the before times. In the before times. It takes place in Angels Rise. I believe yes. this is our first episode yes, in Angels our first Rise. episode. Though it, it, there's not really much in the town except for the tea shop and the exchequer. Yeah. The checker, sorry. The checkers, yeah. yeah. There's not much to it. Well, no. And the mansion and the sculpture park. Yes. And, and Simeon's trailer of goodies. Simeon's art trailer and then the climbing... The climbing center. Center that is not a climbing center. It is a zip line place. Yes. The first appearance of zip lines on Midsummer. Wow, that's notable. <laughs> Not really. Not, n- no. Never mind that they don't have a lock that works, or they sit around and drink beer in there in the evenings. Hey, they got a little. There are some problems with the climbing set. <laughs> so this whole episode centers around a couple groups of people, and like I was like drawing family trees in my notes, right? Yes. So there's Brandon Monkford and his wife, Alexandra Monkford. Yes. Who own the big house. They own the mansion. They have two children, Fabian. <laughs> Fabian. Oh, What my a name. Gosh. And Rachel. She got lucky, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> Who's engaged to Killian Staples. If there's a character that needs to go in this episode, it's Rachel. She does nothing. Nothing. Killian is, is the brother of Clemmy. Yes. Staples. Yes. Who is the girlfriend of Bryn, who owns the tea shop. Who, <laughs> on the side, is sleeping with... Well, not Bryn, Clemmy. Yeah. With Lance, with Lance Auden. Yeah, the artist. The artist. He's so exotic. He's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the pits. Yes. They're, to- they're the only other family. Tony and Summer. He's the groundskeeper at the house. She's the housekeeper. And their daughter, Helena. I'm going to say she may be the worst human being ever. Who, Summer or Uh, Helena? Summer. Well, she's the killer. She's the killer. Yeah. But the reasons why she kills, and we'll get to them, are... Pretty wackadoodle. Not the best. She's a little wackadoodle. And then out on the, the periphery of all of this is Daniel Fargo. Now... We're we're losing the lead here because there are two familiar faces here, here in this episode. There's a ton of familiar yeah, faces true, in this episode. True. But mostly is Daniel Fargo, played by... David Bamber. Who is one of our favorites. He was in The Black Book. He was in Dead Letters. He's been in a million things, and we love him in everything. And we often refer to him as Big Ears Strangely Strong. Yes, because... <laughs> He has large ears, and he is now strangely buff, crazy buff. Dude, he's a middle-aged man who suddenly decided to get fit, and he did it. If you watch his Twitter now, it's like bodybuilding stuff. Look at my muscles. Yeah. Good for him. Oh, yeah. I think it's awesome. And we talked about that last time. And and I think that you see a little of it here. His his coats and... Waistcoats and uh, shirts are a little tight. Yep. At top. The other folks who should be familiar from other episodes are Sherry Lungi, who plays Alexandra Monkford. Yes. She was in The Green Man. Yep. And then Saskia Reeves, who plays Summer Pitt. She was in the sort of game, Gil Glame. Yes. And then, of course, Adrian Scarborough, who plays Tony Pitt, who was in Picture of Innocence and Ring Out Your Dead. Yeah, uh, the bell ringer gambler. Isn't he betting on the horses on the side, too? Ring-a-ding-ding! Yeah, that's right. (laughs) 
And then John Hollingworth, who plays Bren, the yes. guy who runs the tea shop, he might look familiar to okay. folks because he's in the new Dag Leash series. He plays the doctor at the nursing home. Oh, that's right. Did he look familiar yeah, to you? Yeah, did. And then speaking of Harry Potter, Michael Wildman, who plays Killian Staples, yes. played a centaur in Harry Potter Order of the Phoenix. Nice. That must have been some fun CGI makeup, yeah. green screen, dots on your body stuff. Yeah. There, there's an, a, Maybe that's a present to the people we offended last week with our mix-up between Ravenclaw and Slytherin. Yes. We give you a centaur yes. in this episode. And then the sort of location of this sort of centralized is a sculpture park. Mm-hmm. So, and there are actual pieces of art in here now. Did well, the whole place, the whole Monkford mansion. Yes. <laughs> which is a mouthful. Is full of art. We're supposed to get the impression that he's a very successful businessman and that he collects art of all kinds. There's classical art in the house. There's modern art in the house. There's a lot of art that strangely features his face. Yeah. Did you notice that? And he's a little cross between like Riff Raff from Rocky Horror and um, the Dungeon Keeper. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Dungeon Keeper. It's Crypt Keeper. And like, okay, Alexandria is having an affair. Yeah. With with Daniel. With Fargo. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. it, she obviously doesn't like her husband. That's no. clear right from the very beginning. You get the impression he's rather unpleasant. Would you not remove that art the minute he died? Uh, well, no, because I think what overrides that impulse is her breeding. I think she's supposed to be kind of a fancy lady okay. who's a little bit more sophisticated than somebody who would just rip her husband's face off the wall. But that Perspex thing in the foyer is... Wow. I'm what is looking up at with, you. What is up with that? On red plastic. Like they You don't want one of me like that? They I must, mean, come on. Well, you're, you're like three times the size of my head? You're beautiful though. He is not. <laughs> That's awfully sweet of you. I just I still don't know think I want my face what, on sliced perspective. I just want to know the brief for the production people for this episode. Yeah. Because they they must have been like, okay, we need an art thing that's sort of like that because it starts with the drawings. Yes. So it starts with the drawings. And then the sculptures are sort of like the drawings, but not like the drawings, mm -hmm. right? So they had to build those things. Yeah. Then they had to build the things in the house. Yeah. And those are all kind of weird and involved as well. Yeah. I looked to see if I could find any evidence from the show that maybe they got like real art pieces from local artists and put them in the house or whatever. And I couldn't find any reference to anything. I, so my only I, assumption is that the the set dressers, the props folks created all of those pieces. Yep. Like the one with all the mannequins, mm -hmm. those mannequins are clearly like set dresser mannequins. They're, yeah, they're mass produced. And that is a big light rig. Yeah. Like, so like they obviously took parts of, Stuff that was already there. Right. And a lot of artists do that. They, yeah. they make sculptures out of pre-made objects. No, no. But to do it for the show. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They were like, oh, we need to do that. By we the way. We need about 16 mannequins. Well, no, 15 because we need an open spot. Yeah. With a pole. <laughs> With an we'll, uncomfortable pole. We'll get to the uncomfortable pole. So one of them is weird. Okay. One? Okay. One of them is weird. Okay, the One of the sculptures is weird. The merman is weird. I like the, modern art a the lot. The skull is weird. There's some weird stuff going on here. But that the sculpture where Brown Brandon is found dead. Yes. Is do, do you think that liquid is CGI? Uh, yes. Okay. In some in some shots, it's definitely like when it turns on, it's definitely CGI. Yeah. Because in reality, that liquid would clog up a fountain super fast. It would start to evaporate and it would get kludgy. It looks like um, almost like a cry like if you mixed um, gold acrylic paint, water, and dish soap. Yeah. Together to get that kind of thick consistency, which would not do well in a fountain. They also made a brochure for the uh, sculpture park. Yes. It's not anything amazing, but they made one. What they didn't do is put up enough lights. No. Give people a map. Yeah. 
they they say Brandon says it's open and it's like it's pitch black. Why would you go do wander that around at in night? the woods? Why not do that at two in the afternoon? I know, I know. Yeah, it would be so much better. Yeah, but, ah, that's what they do. So there's a party that Brandon's giving, and there's all this running around in the forest. <laughs> and Bryn shows up to give Clemmy a kiss, but really to watch him. What? To watch her and to place him at the scene. Yeah. And then she is at this weird sculpture. Which Summer later says is inspired by her mother. Yeah. That's her mother? <sighs> that represents her mom? Looney. Okay. <laughs> okay. Apparently her mom was a un- undetailed kind of amorphous woman who poured gold out of a slit. Because that's what it is. It's so weird. <laughs> It comes out of a little slit. Not like a, a, a vase pouring out or a flower or no, something. It's, it's a, just a slit. It's a slit. <laughs> so Clemmy is sitting there in front of that statue mm-hmm. on like a little bench thing. Yeah. And then Brandon kind of lurches around it and yeah. falls. In I the- think he's like leaning dead against the other side and slumps. But how does it like... How does the killer do that so that he slumps in just the right way? Like, the (laughs) how he is, how he is presented is problematic to me. Oh, it doesn't bother me at all. I figure he's just, he's just leaned up against the other side of the statue, kind of like, uh, in her arms, maybe. And then as his body gets more and more slack, he slumps over. I think okay. it's dramatic. And he's got the gold paint dripping over his head and onto his white, ugly suit. And he's looking all creepy. I definitely scream. So there's a thing that bothers me about this episode. <laughs> and it's totally Mark. <laughs> okay, Mark, what bothers you? Barnaby gets a call at night. It's dark out. Yeah. yeah. And he says he has to hurry. And yet it's morning by the time he leaves. And he's slow. Uh, We could plod through this. Yeah. But you got to figure the party is in the evening. They want to have a little bit of the party before they open to build up the anticipation. So let's say the sculpture park opens at 10. Everybody's wandering around. Maybe it's an hour before they find she finds the body, right? Yeah. So now it's 11, and then they have to call the police, and all the the uniforms have to get out there, and it, then it's not Nelson that, has to get out there and verify that it's a murder. So maybe it's 1 o'clock by the time they call him, and if he fiddle farts around until the sun comes up, he takes maybe four hours to get ready? The, I don't know. The problem <laughs> I have is the fiddle fart in the room. I know, I know. I'm like... Dude, work called. I know. It's time to go in. I thought about Not it. Not time I, to do a mirror dissolve. And I thought, well, maybe it's very early in the morning, like three o'clock when they call him, and he's leaving at like five. Maybe. Maybe. Still. But that would that would be pretty late. I'm I'm just saying, if I were a cop, I got that call, I'd be out the door in 15 minutes. Would you stop to shave? No. <laughs> Have a bowl of cereal? No. Oh, <laughs> God, he's eating cereal. <laughs> So I looked into sculpture parks, and they're all over the place, obviously, yes, of course. Yes, absolutely. I There's mean, one rather near here. Uh, outdoor sculpture's nothing new. Yeah. But I know that, that you found some interesting stuff. I have a quiz for you. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. I quiz you. You don't quiz me. <laughs> no, no. I have turned the, the tables. The tables have turned. Pictures from five sculpture parks. Okay. Now... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to give me a, a random one of these. I want you to look at the pictures and describe what you see. Okay, because this is an audio medium. Yep. And try to figure out what is the common theme of this sculpture park. Oh, okay. Now, this list, I'm going to warn you, up the, off the top, comes from... Uh, uh, one of our favorite websites, Atlas Obscura. Yep, they have a great podcast too. Yep, and is their favorite weird wild sculpture gardens. Okay, okay. I wouldn't expect you to give me tame, boring ones. No, so. no, no. All right, I'm ready. Okay, so I have five sculpture gardens. Which would you like first, A, B, C, or D? I don't care. Just give me one. Okay, let's start. Let's start with C. I've been handed a sheet of paper here. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. So all three sculptures here are 
And I'll post the link to this whole thing in the bottom so you can look at all these pictures Yeah, in the show notes. So all three pictures are of human body sculptures, nude human bodies. Yes. They're made out of either metal or stone. Uh, the top one looks like one man with another man on his back, like he's wrestling him, like he's about to fling him over his shoulder. Yep. The second one has huddled groups of naked people sculptures, including two women who are uh, head and shoulders down on the ground with their legs in the air, like with their knees together, like they're forming a, a square with their bodies. Yep. And then the third one is clearly a very muscular man being attacked by babies. Yes. That's a well-known sculpture. Yes. Do you know where this sculpture park is? Or what is the theme? I would have to say the theme is naked people. <laughs> so <laughs> That's this is common in these sculptures. Is they're is, all nudes. This is the Vigeland Sculpture Park in Oslo, Norway. Yeah, I knew that bottom sculpture with the attacking babies was from Norway. Best known for the delightful man attacking by babies. Yes. Man attacked by babies. Yes. Uh, he's also kicking one. Yeah. Yeah. It's like he's flinging them off of himself. Yes. And there are some weird body things going on, like those women and their feet. Yeah. Intertwined. And so the theme is... Just naked men. N naked people. Yes. Okay. 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 I figured that one out then. I got yeah, that one. Yeah. Naked I, people. I, I, that was easy. I'd, I'd say you got They're that all one. naked. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go... I'll give, you, I'll, give you, uh, I'll give you this one next. Okay. I've been handed another sheet of paper. This is set A. Yes. Um... All right, so the first sculpture looks sort of like a gargoyle that's kind of a lion. Yeah. It's clearly got a spout in its mouth and it's on a roof. The second sculpture is uh, shoulders and head busts of four men who are dressed like soldiers or religious. The two in the back look like priests, I'm not sure. Yes. Um, then in between them, there is a, a horse and a propeller. Yeah. Which is interesting. Um, and then the bottom sculpture is almost like a totem pole with two horse heads and some kind of deer. Yes. Those accurate descriptions? Yes. Okay. So what do I think this is? Yep. Uh, I'm going to guess from the style of that roof that it's somewhere in Asia. Okay. I'm going to guess that it's a country that has some kind of Catholicism because those two men are obviously priests. Uh, that's about all I got. Okay. You are almost not correct in every part of that. <laughs> I'm almost completely wrong. Yes. Okay. This is the Franz Sadovikius Sculpture Ensemble in Lithuania. Okay. They are impressive sculptures that survived the Soviet regime. Oh. So this guy went around after the Soviet Union fell and collected sculptures. Oh, Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's got to be some weird stuff there. Wow. Well, the the horse propeller combo is yeah, kind of strange. Yeah, it's that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What okay. else you got? Okay. This one. Our our viewers may know this one. Oh, yeah, this is familiar to me. So okay. this is set D. These are all water nymphs. Okay. Like near waterfalls and little bridges and they're like uh, nude ladies diving into the water around this really beautiful pond that has like um, lily pads and stuff in it. Okay, this is an easy one, but do you know the secret about this one? There's a grotto, isn't there? No. No? No. No, I don't know the secret. These are the naked ladies. Yeah. Okay, this is York House Gardens in Twickham, England. So mm -hmm. some of our listeners may have Twickenham? seen... Twickenham? Twickenham. Mm -hmm. Some of our uh, listeners may have seen these. Okay. They're beautiful. No one knows if they're set up properly. No one knows who made them. Let uh, And no one knows that what the artist's name is. Wow. They have no idea where these came from. It's wow. all lost to time. They don't know if they're set up properly. They don't know anything about them. Well, at the very top of the waterfall, there's a woman standing on the back of what I think are like water horses. Yes, it's all nymphs. And so most of the statues seem to be referring to her, like they have their arms outstretched to her, like not not worshiping her, but like, ta-da, there's the lady. But the, the third statue in the middle picture, mm -hmm. the one with the hand up. Yeah. 
kind of looks like it's just kind of laying on the butt of the other sculpture. Yeah. Like... They look kind of haphazard. It's kind of haphazard there. And the the one on the far left in the top picture who's almost falling into the water. Yeah. Like if she's falling in, she's not doing it gracefully. No, she, she slipped on the rocks naked. Yeah. Which, and it's bad naked. That's one of those woo, 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 woo yeah. moments where you hope you grab a hold of something, but probably not. It's a little bad naked there. It's still beautiful though. Yes. 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 So. Okay. This... Is your second last one. Oh boy. Yes. I know what this is. Okay. Okay, so these are all penises. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the top picture is two very big penises carved into like little huts with little dudes standing in them. Yes. And then the second one is a series of male figurines uh, that look kind of tribal and their penises are so long they're touching their collarbones. Yes. And the third one is more of those little penis huts with two kneeling penises that have knees. Yes. They have knees. Yes, the penises have knees. This is a fertility garden in Japan, isn't it? No. Oh. So this is in South Korea. This is Hashindang Park. Okay. It has a tragic origin, supposedly. Okay. A young couple, madly in love and soon to be wed, were split by tragedy when high tide overtook the woman in view of her fiance on the shore. The next day, the men of the fish, uh, the number of fish dwindled. The following day, they dried up completely. The townspeople were said to be cursed and wondered what to do. That is until local fishermen began relieving themselves in the sea. Wait the a minute. This is a pee pee park? This is a pee pee park. <laughs> the fish returned and the men of the town took note. Thus the statues constructed and placed in view of the shore. So basically it's kind of like you better be around fishies or we're going to pee on you more. Or or we will to bring you back. Yeah. Wow. But there there are other parks in asia that have similar statues that are fertility there's temples there's dong statues all over asia <laughs> it's, it's wow that's those are special okay now the last one i saved it special because it's the closest to where we live okay okay not the closest sculpture park but the closest one of the weird list okay all right so i'm looking at Pictures of very large sculptures, and they're all different si styles. So the first one has a big buck tooth mouse. Yes. With some, like, teddy bears and stuff behind it. The second one is clearly dragons. The third one has an elephant and a baby elephant. So all of these look like molds um, rather than sculptures. They look like fiberglass molds because they've got the flashing around the outside edge where you clamp the two sides of the mold together. That is 100% correct. Yeah, especially the second one. You look at the profile of that dragon or dinosaur, whatever it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's got that big ridge all the way around it. Yeah, that's why I put that picture in. So, so these that... are molds for large amusement park fiberglass sculptures. That's exactly what it is. Huzzah! It Where is, is it? the Fast Fiberglass Mold Graveyard Ooh. in Sparta, Wisconsin. I want these. I know. Give I want to go there. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. These are molds dump them of fiberglass uh, sculptures that have formed an eerie accidental sculpture park. Wow. They're so cool. Yeah. We will absolutely post a link to this because, wow, it must have been boring to hear me describe them. And I got nothing on the actual visuals. These are yeah. amazing. All, yeah. all of these parks are amazing. I, when I was looking into it, I, um, I did find a few uh, controversial sculpture parks, but most of them were controversial because, oh, that sculpture has like genitals and my kids can't see that. So I'll put a big fence around it. It was all stuff like that. Whatever. It wasn't like... So, so Bryn in this episode has, has started this organization in the village called VASP. Yeah. Okay. Villagers Against Sculpture Park. I don't really why understand why they're against the sculpture park when it will bring money. Yeah. It will bring a, a bike race like last episode. <laughs> it will bring people. It will make their village more 
like he he as a local businessman has to at least see the possibility of the benefit of that sculpture park. You say that, but in exchange, Monkford is closing off land that used to have right of way for ramblers. Yes. And I'm not so sure his intention is to make it so open to the public as you think. Oh, okay. Make it so, a rich people place. So they've fenced it all in, so there's no more right of way. And what he's doing, he's cutting down trees to make places for the sculptures. I know this because I looked very closely at all the VASP posters. Yes. <laughs> um, and so I kind of understand why they're against it, because either they didn't have to be against it if if Brandon Monkfort wasn't a jerk face. They could have yeah. worked together. It could have I, it could have been exactly what you're saying. I agree with but that. But it wasn't going to be. Yeah. But VASP is a very bad name for a group. So VASP, VASP stands for... Villagers Against Sculpture Park. Yes. <laughs> but, but you came up with some better names? Well, I thought maybe Walkers Against Sculpture Park would at least be better, and then so it would be Wasp. Wasp. That would yeah, be that's a little better. A little better. Then I thought of Sculpture Park is no... Spin. Spin. <laughs> Sculpture Park is... No. Sculpture Park access walkers now. Spawn. Spawn. <laughs> My favorite. Okay. And I, I had to really reach for this one. Okay. okay. It's walkers at Angels Rise. Park is against sculpture. War pigs. War pigs. <laughs> <laughs> They're not against it. They're just against. Against sculpture. War pigs. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than VASP. Yeah. And see, it's hard to say. Yeah. Simeon. Okay. Let's talk about Simeon. Let's talk. He's not in the family. He's, he's no. not, you know, one of the gardeners or whatever. So Simeon. <laughs> he's so special. He's an artist. Okay. You putting that in air quotes? No, I'm not. Because he takes things that are inside of his head yes. and makes them reality. Yes. He is an artist. Okay. That does not mean that there is a quality to his art. Okay. Okay. Or a style that's consistent amongst his art. Right. Okay. But I just love it. When he introduce, introduces himself to Nelson, he's like, I'm an artist. And he's like, oh, do you have a sculpture here? Well, n no. No. Um, but I, I proposed one. You should write it down. It was called ephemera. And he's like, E P. Age. <laughs> now, the picture that he shows inside his little caravan mm. of the art that he proposed. Of the, the sketch of the sculpture. Would fit in this sculpture park. Yes. But if that was his best representation of it, it was not enough. No. 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 When you now, pitch something like that, you have to do a lot more than a sketch like that. Now, I realize that Brandon is a little harsh in his criticism, so I can only imagine the letter that Simeon got. But what is sad is he he's trying to make a living. He's making his own art. He he, he sells art supplies, he so he's it, encouraging other people to make art. He might not be Picasso, but he's doing the stuff. He's got a 10 out of 10 for confidence. He the does. man has self-confidence. He does. Or at least he's trying to portray self-confidence. Well, well, while you're putting brushes on wires in your caravan <laughs> to sell. <laughs> yes. You gain confidence. He's he's asking Bryn to put his art in the tea shop. Yep. He was confident enough to even put in a proposal for the sculpture park. Yeah. He shows his paintings to Big Jerk Lance because he's confident they're good. He does all of the things that I would tell an artist who wanted to get their stuff out there to do. Yeah. Self-promotion. Absolutely. In a bow tie. Yes. Or an ascot, depending on the... He's thing. a little pushy. He but, is. He is pushy. Okay. He's a little pushy and his art is not bad. He is by far the golden person standard in this episode. Oh my gosh. He yeah. is the best. I would say he's even better than Barnaby in terms of human beings. <laughs> what, because he doesn't waste time getting ready in the morning? He doesn't kill people. <laughs> Barnaby doesn't no, either. No, Barnaby doesn't either. But, <laughs> but this episode is full of people who are horrendous. I did think it was funny that Brandon had commissioned Lance to create a sculpture out of all of his hate mail. Yes. And it's the two fingers up. Yes. 
I thought that was funny. It's but it's like paper mache. Like why would Lance make that? I don't even know why he I don't would agree know. to do that. I don't know. But you because know, he has no artistic ability. Like that's the whole part of the inciting incident is the fact that Lance does nothing but steal art from other people. Yeah. He just looks the part and acts the part. Yeah. He's not really inspired. He's really in art for the bonking. Yes. For the lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you know what the two fingers up means. So that's like F you, right? Right. It's like if you make the peace sign, but you turn your hand with the palm facing you. And you, you and usually there's an up. There's an upward motion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's kind of up your rear too. And do you, but do you know where it comes from? No. No, nobody does. No. Oh. You'll hear this. Oh, it's a reference to Agincourt because the the bowmen really won the war and those two fingers are so important that if they got caught, the French would lop off their fingers and so they couldn't pull a bow anymore. And so the survivors would give the French the two fingers up to go, look, you didn't get my fingers. We, we a, defeated you. That's a cool origin, but completely apocryphal. Oh, absolutely apocryphal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's just no, there's no relationship between it the closest thing i could find is something that sort of made sense and had some verification was that it's the middle finger plus another one yeah i could see that <laughs> you know it's like two up <laughs> and I, it obviously like it's one of those things that you look at it and you go somebody made a mistake and they're like you yeah <laughs> really f you you tried to flip somebody off and your index finger wouldn't cooperate yeah, so you like just went with it slipped out and you went, oh. <laughs> Like, it's easy to see that. And then the other person went, oh, I, oh you too. I wound up uh, looking at the section of the OED for nonverbal usages to get that. But before I came to that source, I found this in horribly embarrassing website that explains to parents the hand signals their teens are making. <laughs> it was so horrible. <laughs> So they're like, uh, there are several um, uh, hand signals that involve the index and middle finger being up. If the palm is facing away from the person, it's just peace. Okay. You know, like back in the 60s. Yeah. Right. If the palm is towards the body, it's more like the middle finger gesture. Okay. However, if the fingers are on either side of the person's mouth and they stick their tongue out, we really shouldn't discuss what that one means. <laughs> Like, that's completely different just because it's two fingers doesn't mean it's related to those no, at all. No. At all. No. <laughs> and that clearly means I wish to have some peanut butter. And there was like, thumbs up is still thumbs up, so that's okay. And fist bumps are just fist bumps, so that's okay. It's all right, parent. Don't be scared of your teenagers because they move their hands around. It's all right. <laughs> just don't let them get them near their face because then it's lewd. Oh, Wow. Did you notice that there's an annoyingly long pause between the first and second death? Yes. Like, there's just... But it's the pause that it takes for the lawyer to reveal Brandon's will. That's so how long it takes. Brandon has given his entire estate... Yes, to his gardener. To his gardener. Tony Pitt, bring out your dead. Ring, Which, ring. like, is horrendous. Because he is destituted his children. I don't think it would stand up in court. I don't think so either. I think Alexandria could could fight that real easy. Yeah. Because legally, she is entitled to, to her something. own belongings. Yeah. And she can say, we've been married X number of years, so half of this is mine. Yeah. You can't just give it away to somebody else. I don't think she'd have any problem fighting that. And Fabian could say... I whined about it, so I should get some of it. Yeah. I was, I was snobby about it, too. I was totally classist about the whole thing. Condescending to the little people. trying to look nice. <laughs> <laughs> and Don't Rachel worry. could say, I'm going to go, like, climb a rope. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does she do in the entire episode? And... The best part of Rachel is she's like, we should leave. We should get yeah. away from this. We should get away from all these people. They're all horrendous. And her boyfriend is like, no, it has to be right here. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Like, she's the first person that I can remember in Midsummer who's like, we should get out of here. People die. Because my friend Bryn comes over to the shack and we drink the hooch. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bryn, he of the irresistible homemade cakes and pastries. Oh my gosh, I try to like Bryn so much. You can't. Ugh. You can't. He's insecure and jealous, but has reason to be. And leaves his tea shop at a moment's notice. I don't know who runs the tea shop. And Clemmy is too busy stooping the artist to be at the tea shop. I know. And the counter at the tea shop behind it, it just looks like somebody's kitchen. Yes. I don't understand uh, it. I don't understand. Ah. Uh, what's up with the pub in town? Uh, okay. It's so called the Checkers. It's called the Checkers. Do you know what that's about? It's a reference to the Prime Minister's country home, isn't it? Uh, kind of. I mean, I don't know so, why they call the pub that. So. Like, you wouldn't call... You wouldn't call your pub like, uh, what's the place where the president goes in Texas for the Camp, ranch? Camp David. Camp David. That's you not in Texas, but yeah. All I could think of was Mar-a-Lago, and I'm no. like, no! So, likely origins of checkers are throwbacks to ancient Rome, uh, where checkerboard signs were indicated that a bar provided banking service as well. Oh. And what happened was, on the they used the checkerboard to show pluses and minuses. Oh, like so, an abacus kind of, but with like a checkerboard. Yes. Okay. Uh, secondly, it's also related to a tree that we talked about earlier. Yeah, the tree is called the Sorbus terminalis. It's or a species of ash. The checker tree. Yeah. Which uh, flavors beer and hops. Okay. Also. Which has a relationship to, to a pub. I understand that. So now X checker, okay, is the name that is used to explain the the financial workings of a British government. Right. And right. The, the office of the exchequer. You bring up exchequer because checkers, the prime minister's home, may be called checkers because the man who built it initially was the exchequer in the 12th okay. century of England. And so his family crest had a checkerboard on it, probably in a reference to the financial system in Rome. Yeah. That was probably brought forward with the, the exchequer office. And so, so it might have been called Checkers, but so, that doesn't explain why the pub would be called Checkers. No. So X is out from Latin. Okay. So it's it's not only it's not the local Checkers; it's the the out one, I guess. Like the, the internal revenue versus the external revenue. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. So then I was like, I wonder why it's not like that in Canada because Canada has a bunch of British stuff and a bunch of American stuff and some Canadian stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, because our government is really British influenced. But do you have a treasurer instead of an exchequer? We have a treasury instead of an exchequer. And then I realized it had all to do with Roman words. And yeah. I was like. That's why. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> I remember being told at some point that Checkers, the prime minister's estate, was called Checkers because the foyer had a white and black tiled it, floor. It could be any but of But I these think that's things. a reference to the exchequer. Yeah. It could be it could be any of these things. Ah, anyway. Hey, Barnaby has to give a career talk later in this episode. Yeah, He's real stressed we'll, out about we'll, it. We'll get to the career Come talk. on. He wouldn't be stressed Why? out about that. No, he wouldn't. He does a good speech. Now, middle school and high school kids are scary. I will tell you that when yep. you're facing down a group of them, yes. they give nothing for you. No, but... <laughs> I. It's, they have no Fs to give. It's like... <laughs> it's a tough audience. We have to have a B-plot here. Yeah. So what is the B-plot going to be? Brandon is an awesome corpse. Yes. And I got to say that... Um, oh, the coroner whose name I just lost. Cam. And I've got to say, Cam is awesome at handling somebody else's body. Yes. <laughs> she grabs his head and she's just like, flip, turn it around. Flip, turn it around. And that poor actor, yep. his name's David Gant. Yep. He must have been laying there like, lady... Easy. <laughs> I'm not really dead. I'm not dead yet. She just manhandles his head. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. It's like good, good corpse acting. Way to go, dude. That was not probably very pleasant. No. And there's a locket they can't get any information on. Oh, no, it's because Fargo bought it for Alexandria because they're having an affair. Yes. How could anybody not know that in a little place like this? Come yeah. on. When Barnaby's talking to Alexandria about that, and he confronts her about the necklace, and she admits the, the affair. Yeah. Nelson comes in and says, like, sir, urgent, now. Yeah. He walks right into the house. Yes. Which... At the moment, I was like, yeah, you would. You would just walk right in. And then I thought, no, that's somebody's home. And then it occurred to me that maybe it's because it's very, it's a big house. 
Like, if your house gets to a certain size, it's almost public in parts of it. You I know what I mean? I understand that, but part of the whole plot of this episode is that they have the groundkeeper and the maid. Yes. And the maid... So you're, you think like, Summer let him in? Like, the maid is too busy killing people. That's I understand true. That. And, and he's too busy plotting the expansion of the sculpture park. Yeah. So I, I think he just walks right in. Because yeah. you don't see anybody, like, it's, see him into that room. It, it just... It's... And a scene that they don't need. Yeah. Right. So the pits find out that they have rung a dung dung and got the money. Mm -hmm. Right. And now Tony is kind of happy about this because he knew this was coming. Kind of. He's elated. I'm surprised he didn't do a dance when they said that Brandon was dead. Yeah. So he is going to continue the sculpture park. He stands up in front of that vast meeting at the village hall where yeah. everybody's up in arms and they're sure oh. now that brandon's dead things are going to go back to normal and he's like i just want to let you all know i plan on expanding it bye <laughs> and his wife and daughter are like great everybody hates us awesome thanks you're great thanks so then summer tries to convince him that they have everything they need and he should give the estate back to the family yes if he had said yes, do you think she would have gone on killing people? I think so, because the reason she kills him here is because it would mean more Lance artwork. The Lance artwork is still going to be there. No, because it has to be expanded for more sculptures to go in. Yeah, but his artwork is still there. Like... She wants to eradicate Lance from the... Right. And she basically destroys the one sculpture he has in no, the park. No, Bryn does that. Oh, that's right. But I think that when Tony says, I'm going to expand it, she's like, okay, you're with them now. Yeah. So now you have to go. But if he had said, does. no, you're right, I'm going to give the estate back, or I'm going to keep part of it, but give them the majority of it, that he would have lived. Maybe. Now, I, don't, I don't know if Lance would have lived, but I think Tony would have lived. Maybe. It seems weird to me. Because she legitimately did not know that he was going to inherit the estate. Yeah. She was shocked. Yeah. He kept it a total secret from her. But would she not kill Lance first? You know, who knows the logic of a crazy person here? She is definitely a crazy person. She's been cooking on this issue since she was a teenager. Yeah. So 20 years, she's been mad about this. Who knows what her logic is? Yeah. But then Tony gets killed by a sculpture. Okay, he kind of gets killed by a sculpture. Now, okay, we've talked about killer skills before. <laughs> how does Summer know how to drive the wrecking ball thing? I'm going to assume it's not very hard. Like, they've already got that, the big ball on the hoist, and all she has to do is look at the controls and, like, lift. I wanted her to ram it around a, a bit first, like, ah, wham! <laughs> Like, get it going, and then... And, oh, yeah, like, swing it. Vroom, yeah. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And to be fair, it doesn't really even do that much damage to him. Oh, Like, okay. you'd think he would have gone splat. If the ball was indeed as heavy as it's supposed to look, mm -hmm. there would be blood and gore everywhere. Yeah, I think so. Even if she placed it gently. Like, even, even with that little net there, it still would have lots of gore. <laughs> I'm like, there he doesn't is even have blood on his mouth. There is like a nothing. shocking lack of blood in that murder. Maybe the net just contains it. Maybe. You know? So I started thinking about people who were killed by sculptures. Yes. There's been a surprisingly high number of people really killed by sculptures. Well, I know one. Do you know the one about the Denver airport? The Denver airport one is the famous one. Right. So uh, Luis Jimenez was killed by part of his 32 foot tall rearing horse that sculpture. thing is 32 feet tall yes wow that blue demon horse at the denver airport if you've not been to the denver airport you gotta look it up do an image search and we'll put a picture in the show notes of denver airport demon horse really just go back to atlas obscura the site we referenced earlier because they have a whole entry about denver airport the horse is just the beginning oh, of that yeah. airport the there is all kinds of wacky illuminati stuff there it's so great if you can get a holdover or a layover, a layover in Denver. In Denver, or just go to Denver. Yeah. Spend some time at the airport. It's worth it. It is absolutely It's a destination. Worth it. Yeah. It's so cool. There's yeah. talking gargoyles there. There's so much weird it's stuff crazy. at that airport. So you knew about him being killed by his own sculpture, yes. right? 
Did you know it took him 12 years to make that thing? Oh. And they sued him Oof. because he was supposed to do it in three years. And he just hem hauled around and then didn't do it. And, and then it fell on him? Yeah. Oh. Then, well, part of it fell on him. Yeah. Um, but not even at the airport. It was at his no, home studio. it was at his home studio. Yeah, studio. where it that. happened. So I don't think they would put it up if they fell on him at the airport. Oh, I think they would have. Well, if they had the majority of it there. Denver it airport. Be, it, well, it is Denver. Of, yeah, who knows what they would do. So you've heard of Christo and Jean-Claude, the the pair that wrapped the Arc de Triomphe in the big yes. silver wrap that recently. That was this summer, yes. Yeah. So, and that's their last work. That Yeah, well... Because he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. So they've also done big installations of giant metal umbrellas. Okay. That like spanned miles and miles. It's not going to go well. I know. <laughs> Just thinking about giant metal umbrellas. Yep. In, in, in open or closed? Open. That went miles? In lines across oh, fields lines. and okay. hills. I thought you and... meant what? No, no, no. <laughs> I was like, what is this umbrella you can see from space? No, it's like a series of umbrellas. Okay. Series? Like hundreds of yeah. umbrellas. Okay. 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 So, But still. So one woman was killed when one of the umbrellas came out of the ground in a gust of wind. They, are, they were like um, 15 feet across. Yes. And metal. Yes. And it tumbled and pinned her to a boulder. Oh. So when that happened... The artist said, we're going to decommission this art. We want, we're, obviously, it's all got to go. That, which is the right thing to do. And not what they do at the sculpture park. No, <laughs> no. But this poor man who was part of the decommissioning was driving a forklift and pulling the umbrellas up out of the ground. And the whole shebang was hit by lightning and he was killed. <laughs> I know, it's that crazy. That is a cursed artwork. Yeah. But if it was in Midsummer, they'd still go on. Yeah, they would want us to go on with this exhibit. I'm going to save the best for last. Okay. 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 There have also been a lot of people who have killed each other with statues. Okay. So there was a guy in 2013 who killed his wife with an Eastern an Easter Island head. Like a full size one? No. A garden statue <laughs> okay. size one. Okay. Okay. They weren't on Easter Island. He didn't pick up one of those heads that are like 20 feet buried in the ground. Hulk smash white. Yeah. <laughs> There was a guy, his name is Michael Gallagher, and in 2015, he killed his own mother with a statue of himself. That's wow. crazy. Yeah. Two workmen were killed by an Alexander Calder statue in 1971. Okay. That was, it was a big metal cube that was big sheets of heavy iron that were formed into a cube, but they did it by like leaning on each other. They weren't really attached. What do you know? <laughs> it fell over and smashed two men. And a metal umbrella. Just rolls by and smashes into a car. But my favorite. Okay. And it is tragic. Okay. It's okay. tragic. We won't make fun. But we're dark. Okay. So we we laugh okay. at stuff. This okay. is dark. In 2006 in County Durham in England, yep. there was a temporary sculpture that was a series. It was like a grid of these big inflatable shapes that were attached to each other that you could get in and walk around like a giant bouncy castle, okay. but it wasn't closed. Okay. okay. It wasn't tethered down well enough. Okay. And the wind lifted it up off the ground and into the air. Okay. And two women who were in it fell out and died. Oh my gosh. This is bouncy castle death. They were not the only people in it when it happened. Oh they were just the oh. only two who fell out and died. So other people had a hell of an adventure flying in the air in a giant the world inflatable and thing. Yeah. There's got to be footage of that. Oh my gosh. It sounds incredibly scary. There Imagine has. if you were outside of it and saw it lift up. Oh my gosh. And heard the screaming. I would film it. Oh. <laughs> That's some scary stuff. That is. Obviously, family sued. It was the company that did the installation that was supposed to tether it down that ended yeah. up paying for it because they didn't tether it down well enough. Yeah. Makes me kind of scared of bouncy castles just a little bit. It does, like, especially in a windy day like this. Full of a bunch of kids. I'm a little worried just about takes all off of and... getting blown up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> She's low to the ground. That helps. We last saw our child at the fifth birthday party of David in the bouncy castle. He and his classmates flew off into the sky, and we haven't seen them since. They're on a big adventure. Oh. Then Lance, when, yes. you, when you think that he is the worst he can get, he just dumps Clemmy. Just like... 
I don't think I should. Uh, uh, no. I'm just going to say nah. Like he's totally into her. And then there's a child that he wants to touch. She's and not he's, a child. She's, she's 19. 19. She's 19. But, but he's they have steezy. To, they have to make a point of saying that she's 19. Yes. And I also think he may be her father. He would not be the first artist to be a little lecherous. Understood. There's mm-hmm. leches in all professions. Yes. But artists are sort of known He's, for it. He, and Clemmy is like a thrall to him. And then he's just like, oh, go away. Clemmy's played by Kat Simmons. Yeah. And I envy her hair so she much. She has beautiful hair. Gorgeous hair. I Fan- want her hair. Fantastic hair. Do you think Helena's art is any good? I don't think any of the art is very good in this episode. <laughs> her sketches look like she's scribbled most of them out again. I don't even know what we're supposed to be seeing on those pages. And I'm going to go art teacher here and say she presses too damn hard with the pencil. <laughs> That's one of your peeves. Light touch, light touch. Lightest possible touch. So when Lance is killed, he's also positioned in a piece of art. Yes. And it is one of the wackiest body posing things that has ever been in Midsummer. It It is indeed. First of all, mannequins are creepy, yes. period. Whether they have faces or not, they're creepy. Yeah. Second of all, big groups of mannequins are that much creepier. Yep. Because you know they're just going to start moving and, and sink and attack you. But when they're brightly colored and all looking one direction, they're even creepier. Uh, but he's standing there among them. Why is his jacket backwards? I don't know why his jacket is backwards. I also don't know why or how he's standing up. So at first, I thought, oh my gosh, his jacket isn't backwards. His head is. Yeah, I thought that too. Then you see his feet and his hands. It's like, no, no, his jacket's just on backwards. Yep. And I thought, okay, so the jacket's on backwards to hold him up somehow. It's important that it's backwards to give him stability. Like she stood him up and then she wrapped his jacket around the pole and buttoned it. Yeah. To keep him up. Maybe. He's got very nice shoes. But I would have thought you would have just slid the pole off the back of his jacket. I would think that. Like, that's just as easy. He's not. uh, And that wouldn't hold him up. He would slide down. His legs would give out and all that stuff. He sure does look with his tongue out there. Yes. (laughs) Maybe he needs the IVs. Did you see the IVs? They're weird. They're like trash bags of red liquid hanging from a clothesline or something that's one of the pieces of art but they're art so the mannequins are all there's like a lot of yellow and green ones too Mm -hmm. they're shiny and i think the pole is there because of that picture that is supposedly drawn by him but it is actually not drawn by him the pole's there because that's the kind of pole you would use to stand up a mannequin the mannequin they have a little bracket and their center back so where screws into that and where is the mannequin that she moved I don't know. Maybe she's wearing it, running around. I wouldn't put it past her. (laughs) Lance sure has a nice car. It's like a hot pink mannequin pose somewhere. Yep. No, it's uh, Fargo who has the nice car. Oh, Fargo. Fargo has the little green convertible. No, Lance's car is nice, too. What's Lance got? He's got a little car like that, too. Oh, okay. A little sports car. Well, Fargo uses his car to take the most hideous vase from his living room to a completely insecure barn where he apparently keeps valuable art. Okay, so the the fatal flaw, not even the hat that he's wearing of Fargo is... His straw boater? Yes. That sits on his ears? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is that supposedly he's been collecting Lance art so that he can make a killing when Lance dies. Was that a pun? I guess. <laughs> Unintentional. It's and midsummer. You can't really make that. This fun. is when she wants to kill him because he's going to make a bunch of money from Lance's death. Uh, I think that's a good motive, considering she hates Lance and everything he stands for. Okay, and she's not about to like be okay with somebody who's about to make a ton more money off of the ideas that were stolen from her. I am not going to go good motive. I'm going to say possible motive for her Looney Tune. Okay. Good in the mind frame of summer. Okay. Okay. In her world. Yes. He is extremely egregious. Yes. He's worse than Lance because he's now going to make money off of Lance's death. Well, he can sell the meat, Lance. The meat, not meat, Lance. That was the park that we were talking about. <laughs> the meat vase. The penis park is the meat park. <laughs> meat, Lance park. <laughs> 
we see this sculpture piece of art vase it's it's, it's hollow so it looks va- va- it's pink cylindrical we see it first in fargo's living room it's over on a table in front of a window and i looked at it and i was like yeah it's like david cronenberg did the art for that i was like that's that's ugly and but i couldn't get a good look at it right yeah but then when he unwraps it in the barn i'm like oh it's just as hideous as i thought what is that so i came up with um Viscera vase. Viscera vase. Yeah, that's good. Uh, gut goblet. Gut goblet. I'm just naming it. Okay. You know, by Lance. Yeah. Meat mug. Meat mug. <laughs> <laughs> it's that a might big, be the name of the episode. It's a big mug. Yeah, it is a big mug. <laughs> it doesn't have a handle or anything. No. I think my favorite, though, is bowel basin. Bowel. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's made out of bowels. I'm sorry. It's guts. It's bad it's like an intestinal vessel i don't know <laughs> it's really yucky and then he gets put on the worst swing set ever. <laughs> we both said the contraption he's in is the worst swing set ever independent of oh, one another wow. i don't know what it is it is a thing to lift up heavy things okay so, so it's like a wench with a so, tripod stand yeah, so being in a place that has art sculptures makes like sense. the meat sculpture makes sense. Like the bow basin. Yeah. You would you would need something like that. Yeah. But poor Fargo gets strapped into it like he's on swing set. Yep. And then she just starts pouring gasoline everywhere. Ah, oh, she is Looney McTony. I can I can smell it. Yeah. In my head I can smell it. Ugh. The straw, the poor, cardboard, and, the wood, okay. the gas. So now Let's take Lance's perspective, not Lance. Let's take Fargo. Fargo's perspective on this. Uh huh. He has got the house back for the family. Yes. Okay. So he's he's, he's he thinks he's going to be girlfriend. Lord of the Manor now. He's impressed his girlfriend yes. enough that he's got the house back. Yep. His main artist that he's been betting on all of his life, basically, is now dead. In a fabulous way. In a fabulous way. So this is like. Dollar sign. Money, 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 money. Right? Yeah. And he wakes up and he's on the swing and all he can smell is gas and the maid is there. Yeah. He must be like, what the hell is, is going, going on? on? Yeah. Like, th- there's no there's no way he knew he was in danger from her. No. No, no. Because what we find out, of course... Is that she was an art student and Lance stole all of her sketches and then proceeded to build a career on her sketches, which is really hard to do as an artist. And they're not that original. And there's not that many of them. No. And like one's a dude under some rope. Yeah. That's not even what that sculpture is. No. It's a ball on a plinth. Yeah. The ropes are only there to place the ball. I don't think they're part of the sculpture. It's weird and wrong. There's so many weird and wrong parts to that. I, I can only think that what broke her was tragedy in her life. I, and so yeah. it, that exacerbated it. But yeah. then why did she wait so long? I don't. What is the inciting incident other than Lance has come back to get put stuff in the park? But he didn't just drive up to the sculpture park that afternoon and drop that baby. Right. He's been there for a while. He's yeah. been commissioned to do several pieces. And yeah, I just don't, I don't know what made her snap. So do you think Helena is his daughter? Is no. Lance's daughter? No. I totally do. She's way too blonde, honey. I'm sorry. Well, she looks like her parents. Okay. She's got ding dong dad. He's blonde. <laughs> She's got crazy she's, made mom. She's blonde. She's got a natural incl- inclination to ring bells. Yeah, she just can't help it. Yeah. She just wants to wear flares so bad. She doesn't know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she looks too much like her parents. And I think they did that on purpose. Yeah. Because the whole situation would have been different if her daughter was his daughter. Yeah. I, I think that would make a lot more conflict about killing him. Yeah. But no. Mom, are you a killer? Yes. (laughs) Sorry, honey. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm going to go to London. Well, you have a solid case that you own the big house now. Yeah. Unless Summer signs some paperwork in the meanwhile, she comes back and she says, well, I've just given it all back. 
But yep. that doesn't mean that she's done it legally. She yet. says, get the lawyers to get it set up. Yeah. So it's S- not official. Helena could easily say, no. This is all mine. This is all mine. Yeah. So oh. before we go on to after the credits, we have to do best corpse. Well, and then there's a careers talk. Do we even need to talk about no. it? No. There's nothing to say. All It's like the moral of the story is to speak from your heart, not cue cards. The yeah. The end. The end. He should have been like, I get to drive fast. And so I was just on this case and there were these bodies and this one guy was posed like he was a mannequin and, like, and it was crazy. The middle schooler should have asked, have you seen a dead body? Yeah. And he like, that's the entry into talking about those things. Yeah. Like you won't believe where they put the pole to hold him up. It was yep. like, whoa. <laughs> Speaking of two fingers. Anyhow, best corpse. <laughs> nice corpse. Okay. Brandon, Tony, or Lance? I'm going to go Tony because of the pictures of Tony. But he's not even gory or anything. And he is rock solid. When that, like, that netting would show if you were breathing. In- it, it would telegraph it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm gonna go with Brandon because when he's on the slab, he's got the the Y incision. He's really good on. It's the not slab. moving. He's really good. She on turns the slab. his head back and forth. I, I just can't give it to him because of the. Uh, I'm a monster. Oh, no. when he slumps yeah. around the the sculpture. It, yeah. Nah, I, I'm. I gotta give it to him for the for the morgue work alone. No. Nope. By the way, speaking of that. On a side note, I don't know why I never did it before. I looked up the rules about being a corpse actor for the actors union. Yeah. Now, this is for SAG. I don't know if it applies everywhere. It's definitely true in the U.S. Different union in the U.K. In most cases, corpse actors are background actors. They don't have speaking parts prior to being dead. Absolutely. So the rules are primarily about background actors. Yes. Who in the U.S. get paid $139 a day for an eight-hour day. Okay. Plus, they get overtime if they work overtime and all the food that they want, right? Okay. That's just that's, if, that's just that's if you normal sta- extra. That's just if you stand in the background, yeah. right? If you are a corpse actor, you make an additional hundred bucks. Oh. Because you have to come in for more wardrobe fittings, and they usually make you come in to get your photograph taken for life photos. Yeah. To put around like your home or yeah. whatever to show what you look like before you were dead. Yep. <laughs> So you make extra money there. If you have extensive makeup or you have to get wet, yeah. you earn an extra $14. So our favorite corpse actor in Electric Vendetta. Mm-hmm. The guy in the crop circle. He's there the whole day. He gets bonus because he's nude. He's nude. He has makeup. He would get an extra hundred dollars plus. <laughs> so he probably I would made. Say he'd ask for the fourteen bucks for being in in the field. I naked. bet he made three hundred bucks a day. Yep, that's it. And the the thing is, as we talked about in that episode, he would have had to walk all the way out into that field by himself. Oh no, not necessarily. Because they take a long shot. Of I him. know, but there's a path. I'm sure it's just it's just perpendicular to the camera, no, so no, you no, can't no. see it. No, no. But he had to get out there all by oh, himself. Yeah. Get naked. Yeah. Hide Dip, his clothes. Ditch his robe and lay down. And lay down. Maybe his robe's underneath him. Fold Ma- it up. I maybe. <laughs> but I wow, what an actor! While I was looking into this, though, I found out you could make extra money this way. Okay. If you were a SAG background actor and you were in a role that required you to have a beard, yeah. And you have a beard, yeah. You get paid nineteen bucks extra. Nineteen bucks extra for beards. For having a beard in a role that requires a beard. Okay. So it's 19 bucks not to shave your beard off spontaneously, I guess. I guess. I guess. Whatever that means. Oh. They only pay you 30 bucks if they require you to cut your hair. The life of an extra is hard, man. I don't know how they survive. It's it, it's they no do, money. They do three or four. Well, okay. If you're making $200 a day, yeah. that means you make $1,000 a week. Right. Which means you make four grand a month. Before taxes. Before taxes and all that stuff. And you have to subtract travel costs yep. and they usually have to provide their own wardrobe. But you don't have to pay for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, baby. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all the food. That's, That's why it is, it's a trope, but that's why extras eat 
everything that craft services has. Yeah. But you're assuming that they work five days a week. They don't. They're probably, hard. they're probably waiting in line and auditions and stuff yep. two days a week, at least. Yep. I don't, you can't make a living at anyway. Those are the rules. And I didn't know, I don't know why it didn't occur to me to look those up earlier, but. Um, so there's a woman who commented on one of our YouTubes. And I want you to comment again. I don't remember your name off the top of my head, but you said that you were in the episode, the newer episode where you were in the choir in the episode of Pirates of Penzance. Oh, yeah. Tell us. We want to know what it was like. And what you got paid. Yeah. If you'll tell us. If you'll tell us. Yeah. Now, we would go on Midsummer for free. Heck, I'd like to talk to her. Yeah. We could do a little interview with her if she'd be willing to. Midsummer people. If you're listening. We can make it there. We'll get there if we can be in the background. (laughs) If If you need some podcasters. You want corpses? We can do yeah, corpses. We could do any. <laughs> oh my gosh, to be on Midsummer. Mark will be a naked guy in a crop circle. Oh, I would. My <laughs> flabby ass would be lying right there. Not, no problem. You'd at all. probably get bonus pay because they'd probably have to use makeup to cover your tattoos. Yep. So that, you know, if they put body makeup on you, 14 yep. bucks, baby. Yep. Now I'm like imagining a Christmas picture for the Christmas video where I'm lying on <laughs> We might need to do some photoshopping, uh, but see, I'd no. have to take a picture of you naked just to start. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm not doing that Christmas card. Not this year. Not no. Any. After the credits. After the credits. Helena can claim okay. everything if she wants to. Daniel's almost dead, probably scarred. At least he has a girlfriend. He might have a house. Yes. And he's got lots of art. And a great story because now there are murders related oh, to oh all gosh. that sculpture he and is art. Mint. Now the the bow basin is probably worth three yeah. times what it was. Helena is a little screwed up. Yes. Her parents are either dead or going to prison. One having killed the other one. I don't think she's going to be pursuing an art career anytime soon. Fabian needs to spend some money and buy some scruples because he has none. Fabian's got to wake up and smell the coffee yeah. that the real world's out there. Yep. Yeah. As does Bryn. Really? Yeah. Fabian and Bryn are the same person. Do you think that Bryn and Clemmy will stay together? No. No. I don't think so either. No. Rachel fades into the background. With Killian or without Killian? It depends if the park stays open. Yeah. They seem like they've got a good thing between them. It's just kind of stressed right now because they've done a lot of... They've they've started this business together. They work really hard. It's really hard work. At not getting a new lock. (laughs) And making a zip line climb park. Yep. Um, so I think I think they'll stay together. Simeon's gonna sell stuff out of the trailer. I think so. I hope he gets noticed. Simeon just keeps on keeping on. He'll be one of those guys who gets noticed when he's like ninety years old. Yeah. And then he'll be well, what do they call it? They call it like naive art. And they'll suddenly realize he had fabulous insights in all of his paintings. Now one thing we haven't talked about is Alexandra and Summer have a friendship mm-hmm. that's mentioned. Yeah. And she is the one who's comforting Helena at the end. Yeah. Like, I think that Alexandria has to do that. I think she will take care of Helena. Yeah. Clemmy's just waiting for the next artist to come to town. (laughs) Maybe Clemmy will realize that she needs us to raise her standards a little bit, that she deserves better than Bryn or Lance, and do something with her life that makes her happy. What do you you think the best thing in Bryn's tea shop is? What do you think his best baked good is? Pastries. Pastries. Some kind of pastry. I don't know. Maybe he makes macrons. Macaroons? Yeah. Macron is the president of France. Yes. (laughs) Maybe he makes little Boris Johnsons. They're tasty. (laughs) They'd have to have coconut on top. Yes. Really messy coconut. Okay. It's not it's not the most charming episode of Midsummer, but no. you gotta give it credit for the murder oh, methods. The murder methods are fantastic. Are creative. Yep. Next week, Saints and Sinners, Archaeology. We will talk time team. We will be live. Extravaganza. Season eighteen oh five. Uh December eighteenth at two PM. We are going live. Two PM Eastern. Yep. Be there, be square. How can they find the link to the YouTube? It'll be all over our socials this week and or later on this week, I'm going to put up the, the thing where you can set a reminder and all that stuff. Great. Yep. We had so much fun last time. Yeah. If you came last time, please come again. Oh. And if you didn't come last time and you can, 
be there. It we it really it, it way surpassed how much fun I thought it was going to be. It was a blast. One one of the friends of the podcast, Pi Pi, is changed her work schedule <laughs> so that she could be. On the live stream. Wow, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. Yeah. We will try to to live up to the trouble that you have gone to to be there. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right now. Olive will be on screen. Yes, Olive will make an appearance. And I have to say both of her ears are pointing up now. Yes, and she looks so super cute. She's the most adorable. We got new merch. We got a newsletter coming at the end of December. We got uh, a, a thing going on on our merch store that if you buy anything in the month of December, December all the profits are going to Meals on Wheels. All the profits are going to Meals on Wheels for a little Christmas gift to them because they do great work and they help great people. The Kickstarter is funded. It's got three days left. But if you want to keep going, giving me money, that's awesome. <laughs> I can't believe I did that's another for your successful comic. That's awesome. Kickstarter. Uh, we're on Instagram, Twitter, email, the Facebook groups, Midsummer for Acorn. If you're on YouTube listening to us, hit like, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell. Uh, we're almost at 700 subscribers. Oh, great. We're getting close to that thousand subscribers, which means that we can have our own community on YouTube and all that sorts of... That would be of, fun. So absolutely. Come next week. I'm going to tell you again on sun, Saturday to like and subscribe that that uh, video so that we can get those numbers up. And we will be covering Saints and Sinners. Then the 3rd of January, we'll release Harvest of Souls after taking a week off. Yep. And then uh, into January, we're, like January is uh, episode 110 is when we start. And that's the push we got. We have a very finite number of episodes to go after that. Wow. And we get. It's so scary. What's weird is we're going to get to the point where we're done mini episodes for those episodes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to like listen to the mini episode and see. Not what, cover the same stuff Not again. cover the same stuff. And I'll post those mini episodes again right yeah. beforehand. So. It'll be fun. Yep. So. We hope to see you all on the 18th. Yes. For the next Saturday, of fun. December 18th, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until then, bye, Maniacs. Bye, Maniacs. Isn't she the killer in... Adrian Scarborough play, plays Tony Pitt. He's yes. a man. Yes. No, no. Sorry. So I don't Sorry. know what you're talking about. Sorry, I'm going back to who oh. played Summer Pitt. Saskia Reeves. Doesn't she play the killer in the Sword of Guillaume episode too? I don't remember. Why do you ask me these oh, things okay. without prepping me first? Know. I'm sorry. Never mind. Adrian Scarborough, famous as the bell ringer. You got to cut that. Yes. Okay. I know. That's why I left a little pause.